Hello, it's Aki Anastas here, and we are coming at you live here from the Santon Convention Center. It's the Huawei South Africa Connect 2025 conference. I'm really, really excited to welcome uh, Mrs. Lee Yin, who is the Chief Technology Officer of Huawei Cloud Pangu model. Before we talk about Pangu, I'm very curious to find out about the name. Where does the name Pangu come from? Yeah, Pangu is um, a, a character of the uh, ancient uh, Chinese myth. Mass. He is a god and uh, mm, he created uh, the world and created uh, the universe. U universe. Uh, previously, when the universe is a uh, chaos, ch ch chaos. Yes. and uh, he just uh, slept uh, in an uh, egg. And after that, uh, he created the sky, created the ground, and created the universe. He created okay. everything. Well, I think it's a great name for Pangu because it really signifies what Pangu is all about and how quickly the world is changing. So, what valuable lessons can we learn from China as a country here in South Africa, as a continent in Africa, um, that can help us navigate through these AI transformational challenges that mm. are facing every country in the world? Yes, uh, just uh, 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 after we developed Pangu in 2020, our goal is to go deep dive into the industries, not just uh, building a very powerful models, but we want to help the industries because previously we made a platform called Modas. It is an AI platform. We want to solve the problems of the AI experts gap between the industries experts. So we built uh, uh, the Model S, but uh, after that we, we, we found that maybe it is not work. Then we found the large models is uh, very useful. And uh, uh, after we built the large models, we set and we designed a three-layered architecture to help the Chinese industries to use AI in their uh, different uh, fields. Uh, the L0 uh, layer, we call it the foundation models. It is made by Huawei. And uh, after the foundation models, our industry customers will put their industry data into that to training their own industry uh, models. And and after that, maybe some of the models uh, do not need uh, so, so, so large size of the parameters. So they will generate uh, smaller models to deploy it on their edge devices. So then we generate the L2 layer, it is uh, called a scenario model. So this, this, this afternoon, we, I have a lunch with uh, a customer about the commanding in South Africa. And uh, I see that they have the similar problems. Mm. Is that uh, how do we train the models and, and how do they uh, using their own industry data to train their own industry models to building the uh, AI capability yes. and at the last uh, they'd uh, like to have some small models to extract directly from the large models to deploy it on their edge devices. So such similar things I think mm, not just the China have but also South Africa different industries have a lot of the different uh, a, a lot of similar problems like this. Yes. So I think maybe our experience in China in different uh, industries can help the customers in South Africa. What kind of mature use cases can mm -hmm. the Huawei Pangu model uh, bring to South Africa to help enterprises unlock this value that we've been talking about? Uh, I can take an example. It is very similar like the coal mining, but it is another uh, example in the steel mills. Yes. And uh, which in the steel mills, they want to predict the, the motor uh, temperature prediction. And it is very uh, important for them. But uh, you, you know, in a very large uh, blast furnace, it, ha um, it have more than 5,000 cubic meters, very large reactor. In this reactor, a lot of uh, dimensional, multi-dimensional data will be intertwined. Mm -hmm. And also the time lag is different of the different materials. Yes. So if you want to predict uh, the temperature, it's very difficult. Previously, we, they, they used some of the small models like the machine learning models to solve this problem, but uh, it cannot uh, div uh, uh, they cannot solve such a um, complex platform using so many parameters in the same reactor. Mm. So in this way, we uh, have uh, uh, our staff, our, uh, all of the staff is the uh, uh, algorithm experts 
AI algorithm experts to the uh, steel mills to work with the, the old workers together, and uh, they will uh, they will communicate every day. And at last, we found that maybe the most important thing is find the relationship between the multi-dimensional data right. and uh, the multi-modality data. So this is very important. So uh, just according to the scenarios of the uh, steel mills and uh, the, about their giant actor, we developed uh, the Pangu prediction models. And it used a very innovative data structure we call a triplet oh, wow. to, yeah, to deep dive, to, to, uh, to, to, drag, to drag the relationship between the different data. And at last, it is very successful. Its accuracy has achieved to more than 91%. That's amazing. In your opinion, how should government enterprises and uh, research institutions and uh, technology platforms mm -hmm. here in South Africa collaborate to drive this development of AI here in South Africa? I think uh, the ecosystem and the partners all, is always necessary to building end-to-end uh, -end industry large model system. Yes. It, it, right now I talk about uh, we have to layer the architecture on the Pangu models and uh, Huawei just uh, can build the L0 foundation models, but the L1 model and the L2 models have to cooperate with our uh, enterprise customers and our partners and even ecosystems. All of, the, all, all of them together at last uh, build uh, industry models for the different scenarios. But uh, you know, most of the industry solutions not need just one model. It will need several models Absolutely. like the Pangu weather, multi-modality model, Pangu prediction model. All models work together and they will use the different pipelines, different workflows to help the ecosystems and the partners to training their own data based on all of these foundation models. So it is a very big and complex system. Just uh, one small or medium enterprise cannot support such a large systems. So maybe I think at this time, uh, the governments should help them to build a uh, unified uh, uh, large models training center yes, at, yes. and uh, open the platform to the local companies, uh, especially for the innovative companies to do the experiment to training their data on the platforms to training their own industry model and the scenario models and then to use it into the different uh, uh, industries. Two years ago, or maybe three years ago, I read an article in Nature magazine where yeah. they were talking exactly about Pangu's weather forecasting system and how accurate it is. Yeah, and uh, we published, actually we published uh, the Pangu weather on Nature just uh, in 2023. But actually, we developed the Pangu weather just uh, at uh, 2021. At that time, we just developed some of the um, weather forecast capabilities based on the basic element. But uh, just uh, one year ago, just in 2020, uh, 2022, mm. we also layered uh, the punk weather to the different layers. One of the uh, L0 layer, we call it the foundation model, and uh, we also use the global weather data to train the foundation model to do the pre-training. But uh, at that time, a lot of customers to fund us to want to solve their problems like the regional weather prediction. Yes. So they will give us uh, the higher resolution, uh, re resolution capabilities. Uh, for example, previously the L0 model just can support uh, the river, uh, uh, resolution uh, based on 25 kilometers plus 25 kilometers. Wow. But the Shenzhen Meteorology Bureau uh, gave us a requirement about the three kilometers plus three ki kilometers. So make it more difficult for you. Eh? Yeah, so in this way we have to open our pipelines for them to training their own L1 uh, regional models for just for Shenzhen city. And uh, we give them the workflows based on our foundation model and uh, they train their own models and they even change the name. They will not call the, their models the Pangu model. They, 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 uh, they call the Zhi, Zhi Ji. Zhi Ji. Yes, Zhi Ji model. Okay. So this is for their own. This is not the Huawei generated model. Yes. Huawei just provides the two chains and the basic model. But uh, I think the final mail have been finished by our customers. Can you share uh, some insights into the future of Pangu? What's next? 
Yeah, I think the future is that uh, the to the micro micro uh, direction where we will go deep dive into the uh, scientific computing, like the drug molecular models. Yes. And uh, to the micro uh, directions, we will focus on the embodied intelligence because you you see this year we published the cloud robot. And uh, this platform just to help the robots to become the embodied intelligence robots quickly. And uh, in just uh, on the platform, uh, uh, directly using the multi-modality model is not enough. Right. We have to uh, generate. Uh, we, we have to develop the, the multi-modal uh, models directly for the planning and the action of the robots. So we call it. Uh, uh, embodied intelligence planning model and embodied intelligence action models. <laughs> and uh, wow. all of these different models will dire directly like, like the robot to become an uh, embodied intelligence robot. Because previously what we talk about is the AIGC, AI generated content. Yes. But I think in the future we must do the AIGA, it means AI generated action. Absolutely fascinating and the future looks certainly so bright and so very exciting and I want to thank you very very much for joining us for this interview. Li Yin, Chief Technology of Huawei Cloud Panga Model, uh, first time in South Africa. Thank you very very much for yeah. your time, much appreciated. It's a